Hi TV beauties, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Donna Prescott, founder of Donna Prescott Beauty, based in the Crown Heights area of Brooklyn, New York. And today, I'm here with another story time. Another story time, another story time. So, when you're doing here, as long as I've been doing it here, your story times never end, okay? So I want to share with you guys about the time that I got scammed out of $3,000. Listen, at that time was when I just started really making money and let me tell you, $3,000 almost killed me, okay? Almost took me out of business. One day I was in my salon and I got a phone call. There was a young lady on the other line saying that she was coming into town to celebrate her friend's birthday and she wanted to surprise her with her hair service and wig from my salon. She told me that her friend had already been to my salon, got a hair service with me before, loved the experience, and she also loved the wigs that I sold. So she um, wanted to treat her friend to a hair service and a wig as a birthday gift. I was like, oh, that's so cool. What nice friends, you know? So she sent me a few pictures and she was like, you know, these are the options that we saw on your Instagram page. And I want to know which ones you have in stock and we could decide which ones we'd love to get for the friend. So I was like, okay, I actually have, um, it was a 30 inch raw Indian curly wig. It was a closure wig actually. Um, kind of similar to this one, um, 30 inches, five by five closure, whatnot, right? So she was like, okay, I'm gonna send it to my friend and if she likes it, can we uh, make an appointment for her to come in to have the hair contained and then to also have the wig installed? I was like, yeah, sure. So we got through that part, which was great, and I was excited because I'm like, what? I'm gonna get to get a, I'm about to get a book in for someone who actually did a service with me before, who loves my um, my salon, and also wanted to experience my products. Ooh, this was amazing. So <clears throat> all of this is happening on the same day, my you. And this was a Saturday, I think. So they called in the morning and we scheduled something for like one o'clock. And the young lady came in and I was like, oh, it's you. I did remember her from the previous experience, which was really amazing, okay? This lady came in, she got a ponytail done, I think, at the time. And we spoke really nice with each other. She was pleasant, you know. She seemed like, you know, she had a thing going on and whatnot. So the experience overall was great. All right, so she came in, we had her wig picked out to get installed. And what I did before we got the install was, I gave her a great shampoo, I gave her a treatment, I gave her a trim. She got her braid down and then it was time to put her wig on, which I did and everything ran smoothly and she was like happy and ready to go for her birthday celebration. So, um, her friend called and was like, okay, she she couldn't make it in time to pay for the service, so but she would like to make a payment over the phone. So at that point, I had, I had never taken payments over the phone, but I was like, I know it's a thing. Um, and I did have like a merchant processor in place that was able to do that. But you know, when you're new to something, you feel a little nervous. So I was like, oh my God, how am I gonna do this? So, um, I took the payment over the phone and it went through. Everything was great. So that was the end of the service. The young lady left. She seemed happy. I was like, all is well. When she left, I got a phone call again from the young lady saying, um, I saw this other wig in your salon. My friend, you know, was interested in purchasing it if it's okay. So now I'm like, I'm about to get two sales for my wig. Man, I was hyped. I'm like, I'm making money this weekend. Okay, so I told her price and she was like, no problem. But then I was like, should I take a payment over the phone again? So this time I decided to send it through an invoice on PayPal. 
I did, and then we had like a little situation of her telling me like, I haven't seen the invoice, what's going on, blah, 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 and I'm like, I sent it, I must have sent it like 10 times, and she was like, she didn't see it, and when she finally found it, she was like, it's the payment is not going through, then I started making me nervous, and I'm like, what is going on? But then I'm like, okay, they seem good for it. The first payment went through, so I'm gonna just still try to work through this whole thing to make it happen. And then finally the payment went through and there was one red flag. The email that showed up was like a 559 something at something. And I'm like, why isn't it like a regular email like her name or something? But then I'm like, okay, maybe she just don't want her name out there or whatever. So they made it through, so I was good with that. All right, so this is two wigs down. First wig was close to $1,000, second wig was close to another $1,000, including the service for the friend, which came up to probably about $250, $300. So now I'm like, okay, I am a little over two grand. I'm making some money this weekend. Listen, the story gets crazier okay get an I get another phone call informing me that another friend wanted to know if I carry bundles so I was like I do so she was like um, do you have um, 34 inches in stock and I'm like no I don't and I'm like what's going on here like are these girls for real I'm like or do they really just have money to burn like that like what is going on but up until this point, I mean, everything processed good and, you know, the money came through and whatnot. So I was like, okay, it seemed like it's for real. Like, Donna, you are in business to make money, right? Like, what are you afraid of? Man, sent another invoice out, put the order in, told this lady in three days she could come by to pick up her bundles. That order also was almost close to $1,000. Now, I, I sell premium Indian hair in my salon and anybody knows that premium virgin top high quality hair is pretty pricey right so she wanted 34 inches she wanted like probably like four bundles plus a frontal so it came up to about close to a thousand dollars also so now I'm like three thousand ish in and I'm like okay I made some good money this weekend I'm happy I'm excited Fast forward to the couple of days, she comes in, she gets her, um, she picks up her bundles that came in because I made a custom order for her and um, all is well and she leaves. So I noticed that um, the young lady that I had serviced the Saturday had forgot something in my salon. So I tried contacting the friend on the phone number that she called me from and she didn't answer but she texted me back and said that I can't give you my current phone number because her phone got wet and it's not working but I'll pass the message on and um, maybe she'll come back to pick up her stuff which was what happened and the young lady came back and that's when it started getting really fishy to me because the young lady came into the salon with her phone and she was on her phone okay but the friend didn't want to give me her phone number, claiming that it got wet and whatnot. So then I started really getting nervous, like, I hope these girls did not scam me. All right, everything was still cool up to that point. Fast forward three months later, I'm sitting in my salon and boom, I get an email from PayPal, dispute. I'm like, I'm not seeing clearly, like, what the hell? So now I'm flying to, to PayPal into my account to, to see, see what's going on. And I'm like, all right, let me take this girl. I'm texting, I'm calling, I'm emailing, and no one's responded. So I'm like, oh my God, why is there a dispute? Like, what is she disputing? Like, you have my wig, like, what is the dispute about? So I was really like getting anxious and I'm like, oh my God, like, I have to figure out how to work this, how to dispute this and whatnot. Everything just was like going crazy. Boom, I get another email, second dispute. Boom, another email, third dispute. So now there's three disputes 
And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I can't find this girl. Never spoke to this girl after they took, you know, the, the, the wigs and the bundles and got the hair service. And no one's answering texts, phone calls, emails, nothing. Everything that I tried, I even submitted all this information of my contact with this girl and showing that, you know, how I got the payment and whatnot with PayPal. And guess what? I was out of $3,000 because I could not prove that it was not an unauthorized transaction. So apparently, they used someone, someone else's credit card, made the payment, and I got stuck with the shitty end of the stick. Oh my God. All I could have did then was just sit and cry because I was like, what the hell just happened? So that was my first time being scammed. And what that did was, I'm that type of person who's very proactive. When something happens to me, I will just literally go into research mode. I'll start asking questions. I'll try to start figuring out like, how do I protect myself so this don't happen to me again, okay? Because that was literally like my rent that I lost for that month. And up till to this day, I've never been compensated for that. I was just flat out of 3,000 and something dollars. And that was a learning lesson to me till this day, okay? Till this day, I've never had another dispute that I've lost because I've put so many measures in place to not experience that. And trust me, people do try, but they lose, okay? So don't come over here trying to scam me out of my wigs. You better stick me up and steal, me, steal my wigs from me, which was, what was, which was my latest experience. Oh my God, it's so much crazy stuff happening all the time. But I haven't been scammed in that way because of the things that I learned and the measures that I put in place for that. So if you guys would like to know like what were some of the things that I um, put into place, you could you could ask me, I can make a video on it. And if not, I'm just gonna end it right here saying by saying, I've never seen these girls again till this day <laughs> but it was a very very learning experience for me and of course you know while it was unfortunate i was grateful that i learned that earlier on in my journey so that i could protect myself right now so if you're new and up and coming business owner listen try to put as many things as you possibly can place to protect yourself I, I I cannot say this enough you know I'll just give you a little bit of like um, a little bit of an idea of like if you have an, uh, a, a brick and mortar store an online store make sure that you're taking copies of people's IDs and make sure that you're checking IDs to make sure that it match make sure you're doing a lot of things in person make sure you're making people sign for like sign for like the products that they buy from you. Make sure that your website return policy and refund policies are very tight and in place. Make sure that you have something that follow, a system that follows up with um, your customers and clients that purchases from you. So that way, you know, you're protected. So I wanna leave you guys with that and I hope this never happens to none of you guys out there. Have a good day, my Dickie Beauties, and I hope to see you guys again. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next story.